Donut Dilemma is based on a true story. It's the Coco Show, episode 26. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Coco Show. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Donut Dilemma. Mm, I love them donuts, Boat, obviously. Now, tell me about your favorite kind of donut, Aaron. You know, I like me a good old-fashioned crawler, Boat. I don't know what that means. Well, it's funny because I was talking to our a good buddy, David Z. Now, you may not mm -hmm. have heard this tale, but Dave lives out in Arizona, and he's got a donut guy that comes really? to his house. Yeah, every day. This guy will come out to Dave's with a box of donuts. Now, Dave has recently cut this guy off because I th <laughs> because I think Dave's trying to lose some weight because he was eating mm -hmm. donuts like they were going out of style. He was a donut That's master. not a good diet plan. So yeah. I told Dave, because I was talking to Dave about the best donuts. I'm like, listen, Dave, what you got to do is get you a bunch of crellers, right? So Dave, he's like, what's a creller? I didn't, I, he didn't never heard of a creller. You know, I you don't think I have either. Boat, are you kidding me? What is no. wrong with you would never make it up in the Great White North, pal. No, Crawlers I are these they're these donuts, but they're like they're very light. They're very light donuts. And they're instead of being you know how a donut's kinda of round and it's kinda of like mm -hmm. it's got a hole in the middle. These are the same way, but these aren't like smooth rounded. They're kinda of like very fancy. They're fancy. The outside of them is sort of like uh uh almost like a bow on the outside. And then when you when you rip them open, they rip open and they're real light. And they're just dandy. They melt in your mouth, uh, boat. Excellent, excellent donut is the old crawler. So I suggest you try that. Next time you go to the donut place, ask for a crawler. But what do you like to Sounds eat? Sounds weird. I like your good old fashioned. I like, oh, I'm going to give you two. Okay. First of all, there's only one donut brand in my book, and that's the Krispy Kreme. You can't, you can't eat donuts. Mr. Donut, no good. Dunkin' Donuts, no good. I'm all about Krispy Kreme or nothing. So. That said, the original glaze from Krispy Kreme, when you go there and the red light's on, hot out of the oven, there's nothing better than that. Talk about melting your mouth. But if you if you go there and it's not red light donut time, which has a totally different meaning in the Netherlands, um, the best way to go is with the old um, the old cream filled with the chocolate on the top, chocolate chocolate frosted cream filled. Give me mm -hmm. those all day long. You know, listen, the, the chat here has been kind of uh, giving you the business for picking Krispy Kreme. I'm going to go with the chat. You failed. Don't ever badmouth Mr. Donut while I'm around. I'll come <laughs> over to the house, buddy. No, Well, you know, I will make it an exception. I will, if presented the opportunity, I will eat a Jolly Pirate Donut. What's wrong with you? Don't like uh, you don't like any of the. I mean, donuts a donut. There's never been no. a. Let me tell you something. There, here's let me give you the donut hierarchy. Okay, this is from the worst to the best. Okay. Okay. You got cake donuts with nothing on them, right? Anyone that right. orders those, they're get them out of your life. They are no good. Have you ever had somebody say, you know, I just want a plain donut with no fro no icing? And screw get out of here. That's that's yeah. not that's a bagel or something. Get that mm -hmm. out. Right. Then you've got. I, I believe that's what a bagel is. Yeah. Then you got a glazed donut. All right. Like right. you were talking about. Now listen, I like a good glazed donut. All right. But that's because if that's all that you got, that's what you go mm -hmm. with. But where's the chocolate, brother? Where's the coconut? Where's the icing? Where's the fruit? You know, get something in there. Glazed. I like a little more. You know, I'm a connoisseur of the donut. If I want to get now, a glazed, you go, donut, if I'll you had to pick, if you had to pick, jelly, cream, or custard. Oh, boy, tough choice, Boat. I mean, listen, I would eat all of those willingly. In fact, I want one right now. I'm dying mm -hmm. to eat one of these. But all that said, I would probably go with the uh, I'd probably go with the jelly. I like a good jelly. The problem is that white, you get that powdered sugar all over you. You look like a geek. Mm -hmm. you know. So I like yeah. the ones with the crystallized sugar. Now, what I like, aside from the Crellers, is the old blueberry glazed. You ever had one of those? Those are good eating. No. No. <laughs> Boat, my God, we've got to go donut eating one day. <laughs> Me and you. I'll tell you what's the worst. The worst are those Intamin's donuts. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know the what brand. they are, but they've got different yeah. versions. I mean, they're just no, they're all, all they're all garbage. They're all garbage. Well, now listen. No there's never been a, with the exception of just a cake donut. There's never been a bad donut made. Okay, you know, I'm not buying that. If I had a, a box of Intamin's sitting in front of you, and I said, "Here, but would you like one of these donuts?" I know you're not gonna be like, "Ugh," you're gonna be like, oh, "Okay, I'll eat that. That'll give me you that." Have you right. I know you I'm right, right. but. 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you what else I'm right about, Aaron, and that's Coco Show VIP Robert Allen Murphy. We want to give him a special shout out because he rules. Thank you for supporting the Coco Show and being one of our VIPs, Robert. Well done, dude. Aaron, let's talk about Donut Dilemma. Bam. Donut Dilemma Boaster. You know, we should mention that uh, this game, if you're, if you're watching home, program by Nicholas Morente. And guess who's in the house right now? Bo He's with us people. right now. He is in Talk the chat. Talk about messages from beyond the grave. Yeah. Here and he is. Nick, Nick Morente is in the chat with us in Twitch right now. Nick, a, a, a great guy, too, on top of everything else. So Yeah, fine and Australian. Th this is, is <laughs> did, you have to, did you have to add that part? Like, that's a rarity? Sad. He's a fine Australian. <laughs> that makes it even more impressive. So... Uh, this was a this game released by Nick now for the Coco, and uh, the majority of my notes here come from guess where El Curtis Boyle's brilliant game site for the Coco. I want to give him credit here. Uh, this was uh, this came out in uh, eight, it was worked on and came out in eighty six eighty seven. Uh, Nick actually had this distributed in Radio Shack in Australia, so this actually was an official release boat at the Shack Brother, complete with yeah. the number the whole nine yards. And in the States, it was uh, released out of the Game Point software. Uh, now, this... I don't know if you have this in your notes, Aaron, yeah. but this game was actually slated to be bundled with the Coco 3 in Australia. Really? No, I didn't have that in. in my notes. Yeah. Good tip. Good tip, Boat. Yeah. So uh, this th this will work on any of the Cocos as long as you got 64K, brother, uh, and you can get this thing going on. Now, uh, Nick, actually, if you go to his web page, he's got a little – he's got a, a web page where he talks about the development of this game. Because he wanted something that he could actually, that he thought he could get distributed, and this game was actually one that was released on the Coco model, or the excuse me, the TRS eighties model one, two, three, the, the old uh, monochrome TRS eighties, mm -hmm. and so he thought, hey, I'm going to update this bad boy, add an extra screen, and we'll see how we do. So what he ended up coming up with was the Coco version of Donut Dilemma. Now you mentioned in your intro, both that this was based on a true story. You want to elaborate on that? So uh, Nick's family used to run a donut kiosk. I believe that that's the right term for such an establishment. Donut stand. Yeah. Um. And uh. And you know when you're running a donut stand, not everything always goes as planned. If I know anything, I know that. And so uh, this game was basically, you know, he, he's extrapolating upon all the things that could go wrong with the powdered sugar, with the jelly extruder. All of these things. Now, of course, they don't come to life and try and kill you. Yeah. But they can malfunction from time to time. So he's basically, he's taking he's taking it and he's run with that idea, Aaron. Listen, I've never been a donut I couldn't take, if you know what I mean. And I, I would like the challenge of, of working in a donut factory. I would give that, I would, I would, it would be a disaster, but not for the same reason. I'd, like I'd like some one-on-one -on -one time with the jelly extruder. Well, <laughs> listen, the less said about that, the better. So the pretext of the game uh, says Angry Angelo uh, has raided Antonio's Donut Factory, sending the entire complex amok. Donuts mm -hmm. have come alive and are jumping around in wild frenzies. Machines have gone out of control, throwing cooking fat, dough, and icing sugar everywhere. You must help poor Antonio climb ladders, jump platforms, and ride elevators to reach the top floor and shut down the factory's power generator, which will restore law and order. That's how bad it is. We can't even have law and order at the donut factory boat. So <laughs> you play as this poor beat down guy, Antonio, on his mission to get this donut factory under control. Now, Antonio has uh, a couple abilities. Of course, he could run and he can jump. And we'll talk about his jumping ability here in a minute. He can also get uh, wads of dough and that you can throw, and it all be money, that you throw at other stuff. This has got to be throw the, at the donuts. Yeah, well, you can throw them anywhere. You may hit the donuts. You may just waste them. Uh, but yeah. uh, this has got to be the only game in history where you use wadded dough as a weapon. Can you think of any other game that, that, that you do that? No. It's, it's got to be a first. <laughs> so I'm going to give Nick credit on the wadded dough projectile. Now, yeah, it's also kind of a weird thing too. It's it's sort of like where you're throwing the ham at the uh, at it, the at the it, pigs and it, poo yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it arcs the the the, right. the wad of uh, uh, the and wad it's also, arcs. It's also using using the material that the enemy is made out of as a weapon against that enemy. Yeah. So let's talk about the setup of this game. This is ten levels of dough slinging, pulse pounding, platform jumping action. As you take your uh, 
poor Antonio through this uh these different levels. Now on each of these levels, you're gonna see a few things. You're gonna see donuts that are bouncing around. You're gonna see red squares. These are the ways to get out of these. You have to retrieve these squares. You're also gonna see that's that thing from the fifties, right? Yeah, that's right. You're red also square. gonna see you're gonna see wads of dough. Now, when you get a wad of dough, it's not like you have unlimited wad, you know, which I wish I had. But you've got limited wad, and so you only get so many throws. If you don't, if you mm -hmm. get to a point where you've used up all your wad, and you can't, and there, and you and you need more wad, you're boned. I learned that early on. It's uh, game but, over, baby. Yeah. So you need to conserve your dough, uh, which not all of us are good at that, Bode. Uh, but we need to conserve our dough as best we can so we'll have enough dough to uh, kill off the donuts and get out of the level. It's actually quite a... Uh, you wouldn't think about... Uh, you wouldn't think about d dough management being a pivotal part of the game, but it actually adds an interesting... You're in the donut factory, man. How could dough management not well, be a part of it? Well, you're, yeah, you're not wrong. But, I mean, it, if you think about it, uh, without that, let's just say you had unlimited projectiles, it would make this game a much different game. Also, on top of everything else, old Nick's not just going to let you roll through the game uh, at your own pace. That's for suckers. You've got a you've got a haul tail because there's a timer, and it's an aggressive timer, isn't it, Boat? It is. Well, it's a bonus timer. So I mean, you can you can you can take as much time as you want to get through the level. You won't die when the timer runs out, but you won't get any of that sweet sweet bonus. Well, you got to get it's the, all like Donkey Kong in that way. You got to yeah, but in Donkey Kong you do die. So <laughs> oh, maybe you die in this game. I don't know if I ever let the timer run out. <laughs> I never I never let it run out, but you do die. So mm. let's let's talk about the various levels in this boat. That they start off pretty innocent, and then they get more and more diabolical as they go. Uh, we're looking at, by the way, if you're watching the video, this is a boat playthrough right now. And we're watching yeah. you go through this game. I want to, before, before you take the floor here, but I do want to talk about, what did you think about the way that Antonio jumps in this? Well, we, b before I talk about that, we should, we should take a step back and go a little bit more in depth with the previous versions of these games. Okay, go okay. ahead. So I started out playing the original Coco version of this game right. uh, from like 1986 or so. And this was a game that only used keyboard control. This is it the one I out, played, by the way. Yeah, it turns out that, that Nick didn't understand uh, how to interface his game with the joystick, which is totally understandable because it's that weird analog stick you're dealing with the Coco and all that stuff. So yeah. the controls in this game are weird. OK, yeah. so you move about you move about the way that you would normally do with left and right. But in order to throw the dough, you have to hit the up button, the down button and either left or right. So you're pressing three keys simultaneously. Yeah, to throw dough. yeah. Oh, man, especially the Coco three where the key, the keys are right tightly packed. It's quite an interesting experience, but that's the way I've always played it. So I'm used to it now. But yes, it is bizarre. Now, he added, now, now you I, played a different version, correct? Now, well, I, I played that version for a while, and yeah. then I remembered that that uh, that Nick released a version just a couple years ago, 2019, an updated version that allows you to play with joystick controls. And let me tell you something, brother. That changes the game Does immeasurably it? for the better, <laughs> yes. I can see it why you want to talk two, about that before talking about the jumping, now that you mentioned it. It also has two button joystick support. So you get a button for dough throws and a button for uh, and a button for jumping. Okay? Oh man, you get to break out the deluxe joystick for this one. Yeah, yeah, man. And so this game, well, okay, and other things that he's changed, he's made the game a little bit easier. He's also taken out the practice mode. So in the original game for the Coco, you could either choose to play the real game or you could play a practice yeah. game, which didn't save your score, but allowed you to have unlimited lives. Yeah. Um, so he took that out. He gave you more lives. So you start the game with nine lives in this game. <laughs> this game, once I started playing it with the joystick, and, and this is what makes it, it difficult to review, because he says that he made the game easier. <laughs> but just being able to control the game with the joystick makes it immeasurably easier. So I don't know if I was better at the game because of the joystick control or I was better at the game because he made it easier or some combination of both. 
But I found this game to be an absolute dream to control. As you know, with platformers like this, control and feel is everything. It's everything. If the game doesn't feel right, if it doesn't control right, you're not going to have a good time. And this is a game where I found it to be not like Manic Miner. It's more like a, um, it's more like a, a Miner 2049er type game where you can be a little bit more loosey goosey with your jumps and you're still going to land. You don't have, not every jump across a chasm has to be pixel perfect. Uh, your jump animation is quite, <laughs> is quite unique. You sort of leap like a stag, like a ballerina. Um, and as you traverse these places, but I thought that the jump was easy. Like I could, I could measure my jump. Well, it's of course not a variable jump height game. You're always going to jump the same number of pixels. Um, I also really appreciate the fact that when you reach the end of the level, you mount this elevator and you raise your arms and your eyes to the heavens as if to say, <laughs> yes, bring it on next level. I love that. That made me feel so happy whenever I completed a level. Um, so I found this game to control really well. What did you think of the controls, Aaron? You know, I'm so glad that you've got the new version because I did not play it. I've, I've always played the same version. Mine still has practice mode. Mine still uses the keyboard, okay? I knew of the other one, but I was like, you know, I've, I've played this like this for so long, I'm just going to keep doing it. And so, believe it or not, after, I mean, when I started playing this a while back, I got used to the to the firing mechanism with it, but I mean it is goofy. I mean I will admit mm -hmm. that, and and I'm glad that Nick updated it. In terms of the difficulty and the jumping, clearly the game you played has been tweaked, because on the version I play, it has manic minor levels of pixel perfect mm -hmm. jumping. Okay. I mean there's no screwing around, brother. There's no room mm -hmm. for uh, missing a one little iota. Uh, you're you've got to make the jumps perfect. But there's part of you know me, Boat. You know I'm a big fan of manic minor. And so part of me, and this is not as hard as man, not even close, not even in the same stretch, but it's a whole different game. Uh, but it's it's the the jumping element is absolutely like Manic Miner. You have to it's pixel perfect on the version I played. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was fair with the amount of guys you've got. It's funny because I I watched your video here, and you got to the pretty much the same place I almost always get before I get killed, which is the level of the spikes. Those spikes are tough to get past. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, real and, tough. And, and even no matter how the control was set up, they're difficult to get around because of the way they come up. They they come out comes out of nowhere, and they're hard. It's all it's hard to guess where. I mean, they come up in the same place every time, but it's hard to get your guy in the right position. I, I don't you, know why. you don't really have a. You know, I was trying to line things up with the bricks, and and try and gauge with that. And you yeah. can sort of, but it's it's real real tough. You get you get no quarter when it comes to yeah. those spikes. We also should mention, uh, uh, at least again, my version. I'm assuming yours too. You know, this game talks at the beginning. It has a little. It has. It says. It, it says the name of the game. It's got a little ditty there. It's uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a great looking game. I mean, there's no doubt as to what you I, are. I think I, I want to talk a little bit about the graphics. In this Go ahead. Game. Okay, so you this game is a perfect example of how to do graphics when you're programming for a system that some would say is limited. Okay, because number one, it uses it uses it doesn't use a ton of colors. But you get the you get the purple from the jelly donut. You know, you the, when the, you got the jelly extractor dropping on it. That that yeah. that shade of purple is great, and that that purple comes back like we're watching the conveyor belt level right now. Um, the would it have been more? Would it have been po possible to use more colors in this game? Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about programming to say yes or no. It looks like this game is basically you know three or four colors. Um, but you get the sense that you are traversing a factory. You know, you're in a donut factory. It's that brick sort of industrial uh, factory. I love the fact that every level is completely different than every other level. It's yes. like every time you make it to a new level, it's like, you know, it's not like some games where they give you three or four levels that are basically the same, but of increasing difficulty. In this game, you get every new level is, is a totally different layout, and it gives you a new challenge to overcome. Whether it is the sugar dropping down, it's the jelly extra extruder, it is the conveyor belts, it's the spikes. Uh, I really, really love that about this game. The variety is so impressive. Yeah. Um, 
I this is this is kind of a it's it's a unique combination of different games. It's uh, you know, Buck Owens in the chat said it's a lot like Jumpman. I say yeah, it is. It's got elements of Jumpman. It's got elements of Donkey Kong. It's got elements of Minor Twenty Forty Nine er. This is this is a uh, just a fantastic blend of all of those games. The 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 what makes this game unique. I mean, because yes, I can absolutely see the comparisons to a Jumpman or a Cash Man, but the uh, shooting element in this is real unusual. Uh, and the way you shoot's unusual. The the fact that you have to gather the ammo. It's it. it I mean, it really uh, plus the time limit. It really it's a, it makes it an interesting package. You've got to be real careful about when you use your projectiles. I mean, that means something in this, and that mm -hmm. adds an element to it. I mean, yes, as the game goes on, Nick adds different uh, obstacles, you know, and, and moving platforms and spikes and stuff shooting from both sides of the screen and from up top, all that stuff. And that's great, but the, the key element to it is still the management of, of the projectiles, your ability to avoid the stuff that's happening to you, and your ability to hit these donuts when you need to. The donuts are coolly animated, and when they explode, that's a, also a cool animation, which I also yeah. like. So I mean, yeah. you knew the the the, the uh, clearly Nick's got the got the chops graphically to make this happen, uh, and the fact that like I said, it's how many Coco games do you know about that you can and. I mean, some games will have a bunch of different levels, but they're not ultimately that much different. I mean, this is a pretty radical different game. Every level, ten different levels, including an ending. I just, I just like all yeah. of that. I mean, when you compare it to you know an inferior title like Donkey King, I mean, at the oh, end of the day, what listen, do you got there? I'm not going to get is, on that road. This is, um, you talked about earlier about you know, and I didn't even think about the Puyan connection, but it is very similar when you're throwing the meat in yeah. Puyan and when you're throwing. I really like the way that when you toss your dough, I mean, you really toss it. It's like an underhand fling where it's got yeah. a little bit of an arc to it. Yeah, that's much more creative than just giving you like a bullet coming out of your hand. It, it is, that and that's too. that's that's something about this that is kind of thinking outside the box because if you just had a built-in projectile, it also doesn't fit the the theme of the game. You know, the way you're doing it now, it fits a lot better because you have to collect something to toss. But, I mean, it really does. I mean, you would have an entirely different feeling game if you had a projectile all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. It would, and it, uh, not a time limit. And, and that would, and I like the feel of the game now. So, it, I mean, the, the correct decisions were made, as I guess is what I'm saying. Um, you know, I was looking, If again, Nick has a, a web page that he talks about the development and stuff of this game. And something that's kind of neat, but he goes into uh, how many copies were sold of this. Now, he ended up selling uh, 3,400 copies of this, which mm. is quite an achievement if you think about it. He's even got how much uh, Radio Shack bought the copies from him. Uh, he's got uh, the uh, the model number of it, uh, the dates, everything. I mean, real, real intricate uh, stuff there. So I definitely we'll, we'll put the uh, web page uh, address in the show notes so you can read this because it's chock full of information. It kind of gives you an idea on how old uh, old operations were handled from from Tandy when it came to like getting new new titles and how they released them and how they decided. I think that's kind of an in interesting uh, look into that world. I have not gotten to play the original version of this boat. Uh, as we mentioned, there it was out on the Model 1 and 3, and I guess the 2. Uh, but it's on my list because from what I've read, there's not a ton of difference in terms of the levels. Like there's only one different level, so it'd be interesting to see what that looked like. But mm -hmm. I think right here, if you haven't played this one, I mean, it's a surefire winner. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine any reason why anyone wouldn't want to play this in the Coco. I mean, this is, in my opinion... This is in the t upper echelon of platformers on the on the system. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, without, yeah. I mean, I can't think of another game. I mean, and again, for me, I'm very specific about my platformers. And if a game doesn't feel right, I'm just not going to play it. And the whatever tweaks that that Nick made when he made this new, and I'm sure the tweak was make it easier. But he, of course, you can't just like there's not a dial in the code where you can just twist. Whatever he did under the hood to make this game feel the way it does, uh, great job. Because yeah, I, I, I I loved it. He mentions in on his webpage that he had done he did some tricks to squeeze more colors out of this thing. Now the tricks that he used ultimately didn't work when the Coco Three came out, but he said so he. He he came up with some different techniques too. So of course we know Nick. He's always got something cooking. He definitely has got things outside the box. So it doesn't surprise me. But trust me, on any machine, this is going to look good. I would suggest at the end of the day that you get the the joystick enabled version of this, because unless you're a madman like myself 
who just got used to playing it that way, you're probably going to be more well served, especially if you get the two button stick. That gives that because there's not a ton of games that support that second button, so that's that gives you justification for having that nice deluxe joystick anyway. So yeah, right. good stuff, Boaster. We did get some uh, Coco, or we got some reviews on our uh, Coco Show reviews channel over on the Discord. Uh, if you uh, support the Coco Show, we invite you to come join our Discord, uh, the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord. The first review comes from Exile in Paradise, aka Coco Show VIP Robert Murphy. He says, Donut. Dilemma is a quite fun game from the pre Coco Tandy computers, which Nick made for the Coco, then made better for the Coco 3 with palette hacks, and then made even better after uh, Popstar Pilot by adding joystick controls. <laughs> Any version of Donut Dilemma is still fun. Throwing dough to fend off evil donuts? Yeah, that's one of the more out there game ideas. Even worse because Nick's real life inspired it. I am no good at games, so I can't rate this like Curtis does, but it's a must-have Coco game, and it's always good as a pickup when you just want to Coco. L. Curtis Boyle writes, Donut Dilemma absolutely sucks. This was just to get Nick Grantis' <laughs> attention while he watches this. Oh, Curtis. Just kidding. It's actually a great game for the Coco 1 and 2, and even adds a level to his original version on the TRS-80 Model 1-3. This newer version fixed up some of the better colors on a Coco 3, and using a joystick instead of keyboard mashing up to three keys at once is much easier to use and makes the game much more playable. Each level adds something new to deal with, so it becomes a bit of an exploration game as well as you progress. And the game actually has an ending if you make it all the way to the top. It's a lot of fun, and it is easy to see why this game was chosen to be sold with Coco 3s as part of a bundle in Australia at Tandy Stores, and ended up being Nick's best-selling game ever. 9 out of 10 for the new joystick version, 8 out of 10 for the original. Mm. And finally, Graham W. Vebke, living legend. Mm -hmm. He says, Angry Angelo has struck again. I love Load Runner, Dino Eggs, Major Mayhem, and Donkey Kong, and this game scratches those itches just nicely. Some different game mechanics, of course, compared to those games, but I think this is an 8-bit classic. It starts off gentle enough to get the concept of the game, and then from there it ramps up the challenge. I am glad po Boat posted the joystick modified version of the, as the keys were probably the only issue with this game. Play it if you haven't yet, and see that there is more to 8-bit gaming than C64 and the NES. 9 yes, out of 10. absolutely. Ain't that the truth? You know, uh, so. I did look this up on eBay, uh, Boat, believe it or not. And there are there is a copy. I found a copy. Uh, it was going. It was in Australia, and it was. they were asking $164. Uh, wow. For, so, so, so. Nick, Nick slow, he's slowly selling off his his, yeah. his stockpile. Well, yeah, no kidding. He should. Yeah, that's when you make some extra copies and boats. That's right. That's right, man. So, um, anyway, if you uh, enjoy the Coco Show and you want to support us, uh, you can head on over to patreoncom slash Show and help us uh, reach our goal of making the Coco Show a weekly goal. Uh, we do want to thank our Coco Show supporters. Edvin Helland, Steve Rasmussen, Buttons, and William Becker. Thank you guys so Thank much you. for uh, supporting the Coco Show. And uh, next time around, Aaron, the next Coco game is going to be... Oh, you know what? I don't know what the next Coco Show game is going to be. Mystery game, Boat. Mystery game. Mystery That's game. Well, I guess right. it's yet to be determined, Boat. I'm just double checking. Yeah. So uh, if you want, let me actually, you know what? Let me scroll right up. I bet that uh, Curtis is saying here. in the chat, if that's correct. Dungeons of Daggerath. Oh, Aaron, my. That is, is a, a well next game. That's a well known one, Boatster. So that will be interesting. You're going to love it, Boat. It's right up your alley. Oh, I bet. I bet it is a... I, I've heard about this one. I've mm -hmm. heard about this one. Mm -hmm. So, join us for the Coco Show episode 27 as we explore the dungeons of Dragorath. And until then, all hail El Curtis Boyle. <laughs>